Mei Lanfang is the stage name of Mei Lan, one of the most famous Peking opera artists in modern history. In traditional opera, there were only male actors but no actresses. He was famous not only in China but around the world for acting. The Mei Lanfang Memorial Hall is his former house, and it is filled with thousands of mementos and things on display. While visiting the museum, you can learn about his life and the Beijing opera that he was born in. Beijing in 1894 into a family of Peking opera and died in August 8, 1961 at age 66. His first performance was in 1904 when he was 10 years old. In his 50-year stage career, he maintained strong continuity while always working on new techniques. His most famous roles were those of female characters. In over 50 years on the stage, Mei Lanfang played no less than 100 different characters in the traditional Peking opera repertoire. He revolutionized both stage makeup and costumes, systemized and enriched characters' gestures, expressions, and poses. He also wrote many new plays, designing the choreography himself. The many dances he created form part of the great legacy that he left to Peking Opera. At age 13, he joined the Zillian Ken Theatrical Company and, through performances in Shanghai and elsewhere, acquired a national reputation. The son and grandson of noted opera singers, Mei began. Studying Jingzi at the Peking Opera at age 8 and made his stage debut at 11, playing a weaving girl. After that he played mostly female roles, becoming especially known for his portrayal of the flower-shattering diva. His style of dance won such acclaim over the years that it came to be known as the Mei Lanfang School. After the outbreak of the Sino-Japanese War, he settled in Hong Kong, 1937, but he returned to Shanghai following the Japanese seizure of the territory and withdrew from the theater for five years, resuming his career only in 1946. He also played an important part in continuing the performance tradition of Kung Kwa, noted particularly for his interpretations of Du Liniang and others. Mei was the first artist to spread Beijing opera to foreign countries, participating in cultural exchanges with Japan, the United States, and other regions. He communicated with lots of world-famous writers and artists such as Tagore, Golgi, V. Sevalod Meyer Hold, Lev Tolstoy, Stanislavski, Bernard Shaw, Brecht, Chaplin and Fairbanks. He is unarguably an ambassador of Chinese culture. In 1949, he was honored by the government of China. After 1949, he was named director of the Beijing Opera Theater, director of the Chinese Opera Research Institute, and vice chairman of the China Federation of Literary and Art Circles. He also was named a government official. He is thought to have worked very hard, and he also studied martial arts. He developed what is known as the Mei Lanfang School of Peking Opera. Mei Lanfang worked with traditional Peking Opera. However, he introduced many new features to its stagecraft and enriched the Dan role category further. Together with actor Wang Yaoqing, Wang Yao Xieqing, he created a new subcategory, the so-called Huashan or the Flower Robe. It is a combination of the restrained King I I or Noble Lady in Huayden or the Coquettish Woman, in which the actor should master both singing and amazing skills. Sometimes even acrobatics. Thus Mei Lanfang widened the scope of Dan acting. He also composed several new melodies for Peking Opera and created new dance sequences, still popular today. They include the Satin Dance, the Sleeve Dance, the Dusting Dance, and the Feather Dance. In his acting technique he incorporated dance to the extent that practically all his movements could be regarded as dance.